Now to an up-close look at the pier off Gaza that was built by the U.S. military to deliver humanitarian aid in the war zone. Our chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz is in Tel Aviv for us this morning. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Lindsay. We've been told again and again there will be no American boots on the ground in Gaza, but this pier is as close as you can get without stepping on the shore. It is the only way to get to the pier. Armed U.S. Navy vessels powering through the Mediterranean Sea along Israel's shores, heading south to Gaza. We don body armor and helmets as the boat slowly approaches the war zone. If it goes off and we say incoming, that means that we have the rocket, artillery, or mortar coming in. And then the first breathtaking look at the pier and the massive destruction behind it. Entire neighborhoods reduced to rubble for as far as the eye can see. The need for aid staggering. A new report says more than 2 million people, or 96% of those in Gaza, face high levels of acute food insecurity. Seeing the destruction in Gaza makes you realize how important these humanitarian missions are. And you can also feel on this pier just how unstable it can be in rough seas. We can feel every time there is a swell and you hear the clanking of the parts below me. We saw trucks rolling onto the pier from ships that carry them from miles away. But since it became operational in mid-May, the high winds and heavy seas have shut down the pier three times. Part of it breaking off just over a week after aid started to flow. As of today, there have been only 18 days of delivery. You know that your critics, when they read how many times this has broken down or you had to stop, say, this is really not doing that much good, it's just cover. There's that. I understand there are critics of that, but uh, the sea is a uh, violent mistress. She uh, is demanding. And each time that we've taken damage, we've come back stronger. And while there have been no attacks on the pier, it is without question in a dangerous place. While there are no American boots on the ground in any way, they say, on the shores of Gaza itself, they do get within about 50 feet. You plan for the worst, you hope for the best. Exactly how we're approaching Did you plan for the worst? We did plan for the worst. It seems like it's bad right now. This is actually very, very good conditions. We're watching the weather several days in advance, and we will pull this pier before it takes that kind of damage again. It's a tough, a tough environment. Right. So uh, one, joint logistics over the shore is inherently challenging. Uh, with that said, what you're seeing here before you has never been done before. So far, it is estimated that more than 8,000 huge pallets have been delivered, about 13 million meals transported across this pier. But while much of that aid has been delivered to the shore, not nearly enough has actually been delivered because the danger to the convoys and lack of security. But the U.S. will continue to try as long as possible, but with the realization they have not even come close to delivering what they thought they could. While the pier is authorized to operate until the end of July, it could extend. But August is when the seas get rougher. Rebecca? A lot of factors to work through here. Okay, Martha, thank you.